inside of your email sales sequence, should each email have one call to action or more than one call to action? The answer sometimes can be a bit unclear and I'm gonna to try to help you answer it for yourself by sharing a client story. So I have this client, we've been working together for a while. And when we first started, I was troubleshooting their funnel in our kickoff call and they have a free ebook. When somebody opts in to that free ebook, that person that opted in is delivered a series of emails that deliver the ebook and then attempt to sell a membership. Now the client, part of why they had hired me to manage their ads and fix their funnel was because they needed to sell more of their membership. The issue is, is that at the bottom of my client's email, when I first looked, he had good emails. And at the bottom though, there were like three images and each image was a call to action and a link to go somewhere. And so these emails would have like a link to go to his Instagram account and a link to go to the membership sales page. And then also like a link to go to their in-person uh, program. Well, the call to actions were very clear. They weren't muddled. There was just like three of them in every email. So let me walk you through my reasoning. Number one reason, this is decision fatigue. And decision fatigue is just the idea that making numerous choices or decisions, especially in a short period of time, can lead to a decrease in your ability or your lead or your prospect's ability to make sound decisions or choices because their mind is just drained. And what does that mean for us online marketers? It means the more decisions you put in front of somebody, the lower the possibility or the likelihood that they will even make one of those decisions. We're bombarded with the decisions. We don't want to overwhelm our prospects, our leads, who are also bombarded with decisions. We don't want to overwhelm them. Overwhelm them. I'm thinking of my kids, uh, specifically my daughter, who does struggle with ADHD. She was diagnosed with it. And my wife and I had to retrain ourselves. We just cannot give her three directions in a row because she will forget those two directions and not even do one of the directions. And she doesn't even really know which one is the most important or she will at the time that we give the directions for sure, because she's a super smart individual, but then she goes up to her bedroom and she'll just forget all three. And folks on your email list or people who have just come into your business ecosphere are in many ways the same, but because of decision fatigue and not ADHD, which is don't give them so many things to do, one thing to do per email. That way the likelihood of them taking that action is higher. By the way, my name's Quajo. I'm the official host of the Art of Online Business Podcast. I am just a new upstart. I'm a Facebook ad manager by trade, and I have recently launched three courses that have to do with Facebook ads and Tripwire offers how to make them for your own business and troubleshooting funnels, which are the exact same services that I offer. And so good to meet you. I hope that you will be hearing more of me and back to the episode now. Also, if you put a bunch of links in your email, like my client here, his social media is strong, like 70,000 folks follow him on Instagram, right? So if you take different links to other areas of your business, somebody who's on your email list might click one of those other links and that destination is not optimized to do anything, let alone convert them into a sell for the offer, which by the way, selling is serving. You are here to serve somebody by selling them your offer that's going to deliver to them a breakthrough in whatever area they need, right? And so we want to make sure that we're helping as many people as possible. And so you put a link in your sales email sequence that sends somebody, let's say to your social media. Well, they're going to see your social media and probably get stuck there because your social media is good. And then they might not ever buy something just because life gets in the way, right? So also what if they go to a page on your website and that page isn't necessarily optimized to sell, though it has a bunch of products on it, but then they don't know which product they need right at the moment, and they don't really have the time or the attention to click on various different products to figure out which one they need or read the sales pages of three different products and then compare those to figure out what they need, and there is another potential sale lost. So you want to, here's a solution, put only one type of call to action in your email. 
And by the way, if you are an online course creator and you have a funnel, as in some a funnel, a series of emails that can sell a product that comes after, let's say, your lead magnet or you're giving like a webinar live or recorded, I have this tool that's a funnel leak finder a funnel leak finder. It's a spreadsheet with all the funnel steps. You can put in your percentages and conversions and actually teach you the standard conversion rates in there. And you can see which step of your funnel is leaking leads. Because this is what I do a lot. Like people pay me to consult them on their funnels and I notice the same kind of questions. And so this is one kind of tool that I use in my funnel consulting to help discover the leaks. And now you can go and use it for yourself. Choose one job per email. Emails do not like multitasking. Give them one thing to do and focus everything in that email toward that one action. So if your email is building authority or revealing or showing to your email reader that you have helped somebody with a similar problem that the reader probably has, i.e. a case study, that case study should be aligned, aligned with that email's one goal. And then the inline links, as in those more natural links that are inside of a paragraph that don't say, buy my stuff, but more like if you casually mention the name of a program or a solution and you link it there, those links should go to one place. And the call to action button in your email should go to that same place. And the PS blah, blah, blah paragraph and link should also go to that same place. And this way your reader will be ultra clear where they should be going and what they should be doing if they have the issue that your email brings up and would like to do something about it if they choose to do so. So it's okay if in your email sales sequence, you have an email that prompts people to follow you on social media because you would like to have people reach out to you in the DMs and you would like to grow your Instagram or your YouTube Instagram following or your YouTube subscribers, that's fine. Have that in its own email that serves that purpose. And if you want somebody to reply to you, say like to tell you something that they struggle with because you're there and listening and you might make an episode about it on your podcast or on your YouTube channel, have that be its own separate email. This is what I advise. This is what I do. 